We are live, Brooke. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started then. Hi, my name is Brooke and I work with Nebraska Agriculture in the Classroom. And we are hosting a virtual corn harvest field trip. And today I have my friend Mitch here with me who is from Aurora, Nebraska, around that area. And he is going to share a little bit about corn harvest. So Mitch is in the middle of a corn field and corn is really important to Nebraska. It is so important that we even call ourselves the corn huskers, go big red. Every year in Nebraska, we raise over 1 billion acres of corn and we rank third in corn production across the United States. Corn is a huge part of Nebraska's agriculture industry. It provides us with food, which is part of our everyday lives. It can even provide us with fuel and ingredients to help us make our toothpaste, lotion, and fireworks. The majority of corn raised in Nebraska is used to fuel our cars and to feed a lot of our livestock animals, especially our beef cows. So today, if you have any questions about corn harvest or questions for Mitch, feel free to drop those questions in the video comments below, and then we'll be sure to answer those throughout our video today. So today we're learning more about corn harvest with our friend Mitch, who is going to share, us, share a little bit about what he does on his farm. So Mitch, can you tell us a little bit more about your family farm? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I'm Mitch I'm from Aurora, Nebraska. Um, I'm a sixth generation farmer uh, on the farm with uh, my dad, uh, my brother helps out with us, or helps out on the farm whenever he can. Um, and then uh, my wife and uh, my mom are obviously part of the farm. Uh, we farm corn and soybeans here uh, in central Nebraska. We mix in a little bit of seed corn for a uh, seed company. Um, and uh, this year we're, I'm growing uh, just shy of about 800 acres of corn. So. Okay, awesome. Why did you decide you wanted to be a farmer? Uh, honestly, I grew up on a on a family farm, and it kind of been bred into me that this is just kind of the way of life for us here. Um, went to college, or I actually went to college um, as a PGA golf management student uh, for the first year, and ended up changing um, to come back into um, farming. At, U at UNL. Um, I was an agronomy student there. Um, agriculture has just been a passion for me for, for my whole life, really, um, from, from learning how um, the soil interacts with the crop and uh, being able to run um, all the machines that we do um, and being a part of Harvest has always been one of my favorite things. So uh, that's kind of why I chose to just stick around. Awesome. Yeah. So it's definitely been a big part of your family growing up and the traditions that have pass, been passed down from your family to you today and to your family in the future. Wonderful. Can you tell us before we look at the combine and see what Mitch is doing back there, I believe he's unloading his combine so that he can go through the field with us and show us a little bit more hear about harvest in a minute. But before we do that, we need to know a little bit more about corn harvest in Nebraska. So every year, farmers in Nebraska plant their corn in the springtime. So Mitch joined us back this um, beginning of May and led a field trip with us to show us how he planted his corn. And now we're taking a look at harvest. So there are different types of seed corn or corn that we can plant in Nebraska. We have sweet corn, we have white corn, we have food grade corn and popcorn, but 99% of the corn we grow in Nebraska is called field corn or dent corn. It grows on a cob like this and it typically has a red cob and we call it dent corn because there's all these little dents in the kernels. We have our white corn, which we said is mostly used for food grade corn like corn chips and tortillas. It can be used to make cereal as well as a lot of other products. And we have popcorn. We're the number one popcorn producer in all 50 states. So it's a really cool thing that we can grow right here in Nebraska. Mitch, what will your corn be used for this year? So um, about half of my crop that I, will, that I raised this year um, 
half of it's going for ethanol production and then half of it will actually be going to um, for food grade corn. Um, it's a yellow, um, yellow hybrids and they will be taken over and shipped um, out of a location in Bradshaw and uh, they'll be shipped uh, wherever they have um, their destinations already set, but they'll be used for food grade. Um, anything that's got corn in it, um, your, your chips, your cereals, um, all that kind of stuff. So I'm about 50, 50. Okay. Awesome. When you planted corn this spring, what did you do while it was growing during the summer? Uh, well, this year we had a, um, abnormally dry summer, um, from about June, end of June on. So a lot of my summer was spent, uh, chasing pivots and, uh, trying to keep, trying to keep water flowing um, to keep our crop alive and healthy, so. So do you irrigate a lot of your corn on your farm? Yep. It's on where yep. you live? Um, so of the acres that I farm, um, I think I only have, a, most of it is just dry land corners where the pivot can't reach. Um, but I think I only have maybe 40 or 50 acres total of dry land, um, which, is, which is really nice for a year like this where um, you can definitely see a big difference in the in the yields from the irrigated to the dry land. Okay. When do you know when your corn is ready to be picked and harvested? So the kind of the number one thing that we look at um, is the moisture content of the kernels. Uh, we go out and we'll pick ears out of the field and we'll take them back to our farm and where we will hand shell them off the cob. Um, and then we will run them through, we have a thing called a moisture tester. Um, that tests the moisture of um, the kernels and ideally um, elevators and ethanol plants they want it around that 15 percent moisture mark um, for us harvest starts when it gets close to 20 moisture um, because we do have a dryer and so we're able to start harvest a little earlier to, or we can take it back and we can store it um, in our grain bins and we can dry it down to the desired moisture that we want so wow that's really Cool that you can harvest it and then dry it after it's been picked. How tall does the corn typically get before you harvest it? Um, some years um, it can be five, six feet tall. Other years I've seen it where it's um, to the top of the combine, which can be 10, 11, 12 feet tall. So kind of yeah. depends on the year, um, depends on the, the temperature early on and when it's, when it's growing. If it's got um, a cooler year, with a lot of sun, you're gonna see a little bit taller plants. Um, whereas if you have a high stress year like this year where it's hotter, um, you'll see a little bit of a shorter corn plant, which in, in my opinion, I, I would prefer to be a little bit shorter than taller, just so you're not having to uh, mess with the excess residue from the, from the crop. Okay, what do you do with that excess after you harvest it? Uh, it's all just laying in the field until and it'll be um, over the winter. It'll slowly break down um, and incorporate itself back into the soil. Okay. It kind of covers as a cover crop almost to protect the soil too during the winter yep. as well. Yeah. Uh, how many ears of corn are on one corn plant? Um, about 99% of the time, there's only one. Um, a corn plant puts all of its energy into one ear. Um, occasionally you'll see the, the odd ball where there'll be, uh, maybe two, um, I have seen in the past before, not very often, but you can see up to three usually. So, yeah. So you, you really shoot for having that one corn stalk on that one ear or that one ear on that one corn stalk yep. based on the genetics that you choose and the seeds that you choose to plant. Can yep. you, do you mind stepping out of the combine and showing yep. us a little bit about what it looks like on the outside and maybe describe um, how it kind of works from the outside, working your way around the combine? Just the screen around here quick. Okay, so this is our, this is our combine. Um, we have a uh, eight row corn head um, and what this, what the corn head does is in each individual row, there's uh, uh, these chains here. And then underneath, there's actually, it's kind of hard to see, but there are um, 
a bunch of knives that will spin in a circle really fast. And as the knives are cutting the corn plant down, these chains help feed all the ears up into the this auger here, and the auger will feed it up into the we call it the mouth of the machine. Um, it's the, the feeder house where all the corn goes into the machine. Um, and once it gets into the, the feeder house, it's obviously all enclosed, so I can't show you very well, but um, it will go up into a thing called the rotor, um, which is a big metal drum that's got um, some knobs on it. And uh, that rotor spins and um, we'll take and break all the kernels off of the ear. All the kernels drop down into a little uh, trough where they're uh, taken up into the, um, the holding tank on the combine and all of the trash and residue that's left, all the um, kind of the cobs and stuff that looks like this all gets sent out uh, the back of the combine and onto the ground. Perfect. So there's a lot of steps that go into the combine using the technology and engineering to just get those seeds off the, the cob. And so do you have to know how all of this operates? And so you know kind of what's going on with the combine as well? Oh, oh yeah, wow. yeah. The, uh, the combine has a lot of moving parts. Um, and as the operator, you got to be very aware of um, noises and sounds and smells. Um, like I said, just this morning we had a we had a, a belt break on our combine, and uh, the second that it started to get really hot, you can smell the you can smell that kind of stuff, and so you just got to be vigilant and you got to be aware of what's going on and um, always being observant and uh, um, just really paying attention. So, yeah, safety is really important when it comes to harvesting on the farm as well. As you can tell, Mitch, that, that combine is a really large piece of equipment. And so yep. those tires even go up. How high do those tires go up to you when you're standing? Uh, on the ground? At the very, I'm at the very top of the combine right now. Um, the tires are about six feet tall and uh, I'm double that. So I'm probably 12, 15 feet off the ground. Oh, wow. That's how so, the machine is. So it's a really big piece of equipment in that combine that we use to harvest. Mitch is going to climb back into the cab now of the combine. And if you can show us a little bit about um, what it kind of looks like from the inside of the combine and how you even operate that combine. Yep. Um, so here's the view that for us or for me as sitting in the cab here, as you can see. Um, so we, uh, in our combine, we've got two, we have three screens. We've got, um, it's called the 2020 Seed Sense. Uh, it's our yield monitor, and then we have our iPad that we had at um, planting um, this spring. What we do with with these is, as the corn comes into the machine, there's a lot of sensors and stuff that it runs through, um, and it, these uh, monitors will pick up the amount of um, bushels coming through, and it will display numbers. Um, it picks up the moisture content of the corn. Um, and then it will actually make, I can switch this here quick, I can show you, um, but it makes actually a, a yield map for us. So at the end of the year, we're able to kind of go back through um, and see if we had any problem spots on the field. Um, and it will show us um, the total yield for the field, um, as well as what the, the moisture content is on it as well. Wow. So it shares a lot of information that helps you harvest the crops, as well as knowing the moisture content. Does, does your GPS, do you have GPS technology in your combine? Did you say? Uh, we do, we actually do not. Um, okay. We, a lot of our stuff that we have is all um, ridge steel stuff, which is one of the videos that we did earlier um, in June. Um, with, mm -hmm. the, with the cultivator, we came through and made ridges. So um, that basically acts as our GPS for for the fields. Perfect. So there's still a definitely a lot of knowing how to operate the, the technology that goes into running this big piece of equipment as well. Yep. Mitch, can you uh, show us a little bit? You said from the front of the combine, we call those points snoots, right? 
yep. and they help guide the the combine through the fields. Can you show us a little bit about how you start up the combine and how you kind of operate? Absolutely. Um, so this is our this is our uh, our joystick here. Um, this has Ford. This is Ford in reverse here. Ford. Um, it has our auger control, our head height. And then uh, this is for our deck plates to open and close, um, depending on the size of the stock. Um, so to start the machine, we turn the, the rotor on, on the machine. And then we'll flip the other switch for the head. And that gets the machine running. And then we give our throttle and we're ready to roll. Awesome. So you can kind of see those the auger down there in the head rotating through, getting ready to cut the corn. Put the head down. And off we go. So you can kind of see how it's bringing all of that corn, all of the stocks and everything into the combine. And it's rotating through and they're knocking all of the seeds off the ear or the cob itself. And then you said that goes into the hopper, correct? Yep, so once, uh, yep, once it gets through the rotor, um, it will go into an elevator system where then it is distributed into the back, sorry, my window's kind of dirty, but into the back, uh, the back hopper here where it will be held until uh, I get a grain cart beside me, so. Oh, okay. How, how much, I guess, um, that bin behind you, that hopper, how much can, how many bushels can it hold? Um, well, according to the, the case website, we've never really tested it, but um, the case website for the, this machine says it, it can hold 300 bushels. 300 bushels, okay. So a bushel of corn we weigh, that's how we measure our corn, right? And a bushel, yep is about 56 pounds so if we took 56 times 300 that is a lot of corn that we can hold right in that combine so you can see mitch he's still um harvesting away cutting down that corn um once your combine is full the auger will empty it you said into a grain cart yep and that's what kind of what you were doing at the beginning when our video first started but can you tell us a little bit? I know um, there's a lot of factors that go into um, things that can slow down harvest. What might slow down harvest for you on your farm? Well, there's a lot of things that can slow down harvest. Uh, probably the, the number one thing um, is weather. Um, if it's rainy or snowy at all, we're not able to go um, because the corn plant won't flow through the machine right. Um, kernels will stick to the inside of the machine and stick in the grain carts and in the back of the hopper on the combine. Um, another thing is uh, mechanical breakdowns with machines like we had, we had one this morning with that um, belt that blew apart. Um, it's just stuff wear and tear that um, sometimes happens. So um, besides weather and um, breakdowns, that's, that's about the two big ones for us. Mm hmm. Why is it really important to get corn out of the field in a timely matter? So, um, like I said before, you the ideal moisture content is about that 15 to 16 and a half. That place is like to see that um, if it starts getting below that, um, if you start getting down into that 12 and 13, um, even below that, um, the corn plant is um, it's very, it's obviously very dry, but um, you might start seeing issues with ears falling off the plant or um, the plant falling over. Um, so it's it's very important to get it out so you don't have to, um, have, or you don't see any issues pop up um, that you weren't hoping for or expecting. So. Okay. Will you harvest any other crops this year, or have you harvested other um, crops this year, or is it just are you focusing on corn this year? Yep. Um, so we had um, a couple of fields of soybeans 
and we harvested those um, at the end of September into October. Um, those were uh, those were our first crop harvested, and then I was actually a part of a um, picking crew, and I ran a um, a cart for a seed corn crew and helped pick ear corn for seed corn. Um, but since the kind of the first first week of October, we've been focusing on corn um, and uh, we're down to our last three quarters. So shouldn't have too much longer. That's really exciting. Um, you said, I know we were talking earlier, when you harvest, you said something about having a bagger that can already bag the corn. Can you yep. tell us a little bit about that? So they have a new, well, it's not really new, I guess, but they have a technology where they have a, um, it's a big, like a really big grain bag. And there's a machine that we put this big grain bag on and we fill up a hopper and this hop, the auger inside the hopper will fill the big grain bags. Um, these grain bags hold anywhere from 13 to 14,000 bushels of corn. Um, and if you drive along, drive along the interstate or highway um, you'll see them occasionally pop up um, so I, I'm sticking a lot of my corn this year into grain bags because I don't have any access to grain bins um, and I don't own any of my own so um, I, this was a really good way for me to store corn to be able to capitalize on um, prices for corn um, into next year so cool that's kind of a new technology or a new option that you could use to definitely harvest your crops because typically, right, when we harvest our crops, we empty them into the grain cart and then they can be emptied into a semi truck and delivered to either the grain bin or the co-op of where you're selling them. So yep. wonderful. I just want to say thank you, Mitch, for taking your time out of your busy harvest schedule to join us and share a little bit more about what you're doing on your farm and how you're using corn to help provide for our food fiber and our fuel that we use every day in our lives because Nebraska's corn industry is really important to us and it's a big part of our agricultural industry in our state. So thank you so much, Mitch, for joining us and sharing with us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Perfect.